In today's lecture, I'm going to take you through the configuration module in ServiceNow. By the end of this lecture, you'll understand what a configuration item is and how to create a configuration item. Before we go into ServiceNow, I want to explain what a configuration item is. A configuration item, also known as a CI, is a component that is managed in order to deliver an IT service. Configuration items are stored in the CMDB, also known as the Configuration Management Database. Configuration items can consist of hardware, software, documentation, devices, services, and locations. Tracking configuration items is an important practice for any organization as it allows you to track the upstream and downstream dependencies for components that support your IT services. Configuration items also contain all of the configuration information relating to its CI. For example, the configuration item of a computer can include information such as its hard drive capacity, its RAM, its IP address, its MAC address, its installed software, and so on and so forth. So in ServiceNow, when you create a hardware asset, a configuration item record is also created and linked to it. This allows you to easily track hardware assets and their related configuration items. Within ServiceNow, you can also have the option to only create configuration items and not hardware assets when applicable. In most organizations, configuration items are tracked by the configuration management department. As configuration items need to be tracked and monitored to ensure the availability of business services, the IT asset management department tracks the financial and physical life cycle of an asset. So you're probably wondering what is the difference between an asset and a configuration item. To simply put it, an asset is a device like a computer or a server but needs to be tracked due to its financial value to an organization. Whereas a configuration item can also be an asset but not always and is tracked as it directly affects one or more business services. Take for example an email server. The server itself is a physical hardware asset but because the email server also runs the organization's email service, it's also a configuration item. As its configuration needs to be tracked and monitored to ensure a smooth running service for all end users. Now that we've covered what a configuration item is, let's go into ServiceNow and create a configuration item. In today's example, we're going to be creating a configuration item for a server. The first thing you'll want to do is open up ServiceNow and go into the application navigator and type in base items. Please note that this view doesn't show all of the configuration item modules in the system. To see a full list, you can type in configuration and all of the configuration modules will display. Now click on the server module under the configuration application. You'll now see a list displaying all out of the box server configuration item records. Click on the new button. A blank server CI form will now load. As we create this configuration item, I'm going to explain what each field means at the same time, so you have a solid understanding of all the different attributes. In the first field, name, this field is typically used to store the host name or computer name, as this is typically a unique value within an organization's network. I'm going to enter 01-email, as I'm creating a CI for an email server. In the next field, asset tag, this field is used to capture the asset tag that has physically been applied to the hardware asset by your organization. The asset tag number or code is typically unique within organizations. For this example, I'm going to enter some random digits. Please note, you'll see lots of the same fields here that are also on the hardware asset form. These duplicated fields are synced together, meaning if you update the asset tag field on a hardware asset, then it'll also update the asset tag field on the connected configuration item record and vice versa. Towards the end of this lecture, I'll explain what fields are synced with each other and why. Next, we have the manufacturer field. In this field, you can select the manufacturer of the physical asset. 
In this example, I'm going to select Dell. In the next field, we have Asset. Notice that this field is grayed out and is read only. This field displays a link to the related hardware asset when the configuration item is created. Please note, if you create a configuration item against a model that uses a model category that has the asset class field set to none, then a hardware asset won't be created and this field will be empty. This is how you can create a standalone configuration item in ServiceNow for the instances where it's only a CI and not an asset. Now to the upper right of the form, we have the company field. In this field, you're able to define what company or organization owns the configuration item. This field is good for tracking configuration items that may not be company owned. For example, if you lease or rent assets, you can specify the company who actually owns them here. Next, we have serial number. In this field, you can store the manufacturer's unique serial number which is used to identify a physical asset with one in the system. In the next field we have model ID. This is the same field as the model field on the hardware asset form. From this field, you're able to select the hardware model that this configuration item relates to. In this example, I'm going to enter Dell Inc. PowerEdge C6100 Rack Server. Please note, because this configuration item we're creating is for a server, only hardware models that have the server model category will be available in this field. Next, we have assigned to. In this field, you can specify the individual who this server is assigned to. Because this server is not an end user device, I'm going to leave this field blank. Now in the next section of this form, configuration, this is where all of the fields that relate to this specific type of configuration are displayed. Since this configuration item is for a server, all of the fields displayed are relevant to a server. If I was creating a configuration item for a printer, then different fields would be displayed that are more relevant to a printer. Since this course is related more to hardware asset management, I'm not going to go into all of the details behind all of these fields in this part of the configuration form. But from a high level, you can enter information around the operating system, disk space, RAM, and CPU. Tracking this type of information is really useful as configuration managers are able to track the specifications of all CIs in real time. And this helps them make decisions around things such as computer refreshes, identifying reasons behind incidents, and identifying devices that require upgrades. Now to save this configuration item, click on the submit button located at the top right of the form. You will now see that the configuration item is available in the list view. Let's quickly go back into the same configuration item that we just created. You can now see that the asset field is now populated with the hardware asset record. If I click on the information icon, I can click on the open record button and I'm able to navigate to the hardware asset record that was just created. And from the hardware asset record, I'm able to navigate back to the configuration item. Before we finish this lecture, I want to go over what fields on the hardware asset record and configuration item record are synced together. As you can see on the screen, to the left we have all of the hardware asset fields that are synced, and to the right we have all of the configuration item fields that are synced. What this means is if I update one of these fields on the hardware asset record, or on the connected configuration item record, then the corresponding record will also be updated. This type of synchronization ensures that hardware asset records and configuration item records stay up to date, and both contain the same information at the same time. And that is all for this lecture on configuration items.